Hello everyone, Zaid from Z Security here and in today's video I'm going to show you how to expose a local service to the internet with one command without the need to modify the router configuration, without the need to sign up with any services and without the need to install any third party software. So you can use this to expose a local web server to the internet, expose a local website, share files, or even receive connections to your reverse backdoors from computers outside of your network, from computers on the internet in different countries and so on. I actually posted this method on our Twitter account yesterday, so follow us there for quick tips like this. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already and smash the like button to make some noise to the algorithm. Show us some love. This really helps us and motivates us to make more videos. First, let's have a look on a default network setup just to understand what the issue is and how we're going to solve it. So as you can see, in a default setup, we have a number of devices connected to the same network. Each one of these devices has a private IP, as you can see here in red, and they're all connected to a router. And as you can see, the router has two IPs. It has a private IP in red and a public IP in green. The private IPs, we call them private because they're only visible within the network. They're not visible throughout the internet and only the public IP, the green one in here, is visible throughout the internet. Also, none of these devices actually have internet access. They can only access the internet through the router. So if this computer wanted to access a website, for example, google.com, it's gonna send its request to the router. The router is gonna go to the internet, get the request and forward it back to the computer that requested it. Therefore, outside of this network, even though it is this computer that requested google.com, Google can only see this IP because this is the public IP. So now let's go to the next scenario, assuming that you are a hacker and you are running some kind of a service like a web server or you're listening for incoming connections for, for a specific payload or you're running beef XSS, whatever it is, if you have something running in here, it's gonna be running on your private IP. And as I said, this private IP is only visible within this network. Therefore, your target will not be able to access your server because this IP is not visible outside of your network. What you could do is you could give them this IP, the public IP, the green one, and that actually is visible within the internet. So what's going to happen is the target is going to send a request for that IP to the router. The router is going to say, fine, I can do that. It's going to go to the internet and try to get it. From there, it'll be redirected to your own router, which is good so far. But now the router doesn't know what to do with this because the target only specified this specific IP. Now what you could do to fix this is set up port forwarding on your router to tell the router, okay, when you get a request on port 80, for example, I want you to redirect it to my computer. And I cover how to do this in my courses. The only issue with this method is if you do not have access to your own router or if your internet service provider does not allow you to forward ports. In that case, you'll have to use another method, such as using a tunneling service, and I cover that also in my courses, or forward ports using SSH, which is very, very easy, very, very simple, and it's what I'm going to show you right now. So the way this will work is I'm going to have an SSH server on the internet. SSH is short for secure shell, and I'm going to use that to forward ports to whatever service I have running on my computer. So I'm basically going to be connecting to this SSH server through my computer and I'm going to be configuring it in a way so that it forward requests to any specific port I want, for example, for port 80 to the web server that I have running on my computer. Therefore, I won't need to worry about my router because I'm connecting to this SSH server myself directly. And then I'm going to be sharing the IP of the SSH server with my target instead of my own IP. Therefore, my target is going to be sending the requests to the SSH server. And because I am connected also to the SSH server and I have already configured it to forward whatever 
port I want to whatever service I'm running on my computer, I won't need to worry about my router either. And therefore my target is gonna be able to access whatever service I'm running on my computer using the IP of the SSH server. Let me show you how to do it in practice and it'll become even clearer. The service we're gonna use is called localhost.run. Obviously you can have your own server with your own SSH server on it and configure it properly to forward ports to your computer. But we're gonna be using the service that allows us to use their own SSH server for port forwarding. And you'll see that it's simply gonna be one command. Before doing that though, we're gonna have to generate an SSH key for us so we can authenticate with the server that these guys give us. So to do that, we're gonna do ssh-keygen. It's gonna ask us where do we want to store it. I'm just gonna hit enter to store it in the default directory that is mentioned right here. It's also gonna ask us if we want to use a passphrase. You should, but I'm just gonna keep that as empty as the default. It'll just make things easier. And that's it. Now we generated an SSH key and the key is automatically stored in the default directory. So we, so we actually won't need to point to it when we're trying to SSH into the local host.run servers. And that's it, we're actually done. We're ready to start port forwarding. So let's, for this example, let's try to expose our local HTTP server that Kali has. So we're gonna do service Apache 2 start to start my HTTP server. And as you can see, no errors, that means it started. So if I go to my browser and just go to localhost, just to my actual local machine, you'll see that it says it works, everything is working fine. The problem now is we wanna expose this local server. So you could have a phishing website, a cloned website, or even a file to download, or even a backdoor stored in here. And you want to expose this to the internet. Now, computers such as this one, my target computer, which is running Windows, will not be able to access this because it's connected to a completely different network. Therefore, to do that, we're gonna be using the SSH service that we have been speaking about. And doing that is gonna be very, very simple. We're gonna do SSH, that's the command that we wanna use. We're gonna use dash R to specify the ports and the server that we want to forward ports to. So we're gonna do port 80, and that's gonna be forwarded to my local host that also has port 80 open. So what I'm saying is basically any requests that this SSH server gets on port 80, I want it to be forwarded to my local host, which is this computer right here, to the service that is running on port 80 on this computer, which is Apache. Then we're gonna give it the IP of the SSH server on the internet or the domain. So in our case, the domain name is localhost.run. That's the service that I said we're gonna use. And that's it. It's actually as simple as that. Like I said, it's one command. You won't need to run the key gen anymore. You only do it once. So we're using SSH. We're using the dash R to specify the remote port on the remote host, which is this one. And we're saying we want anything that comes on port 80 to that remote host to be redirected to my current host, to the local host, to port 80. So we're gonna hit enter. It's gonna ask us, do we want to trust this? We're gonna say, yes, we wanna trust it. And boom, that's it, we're done. So this will be the IP that we're gonna be sharing with our target. And this will actually work from any computer on the internet. So let's just test it on our local computer first. As you can see right here, we're simply loading localhost, but let's go and load this domain and perfect as you can see it works it's saying it works that means our http server is exposed to the internet but just to double check let's go to our target computer and load this website and perfect as you can see it is exposed to the internet and anybody within the internet will be able to access my http server without having to enable port forwarding so let me give you an ex another example let's see how we can hack this computer with a Metasploit payload, even though this computer is connected to a completely different network. So going back to this computer right here, we're gonna have to first of all create our backdoor. 
and I'm gonna create a very simple one using MSF Venom just for the sake of demonstration. So we're just gonna do MSF Venom. We're gonna do dash P to give it the payload type and it's gonna be Windows Meterpreter Reverse HTTP. We're gonna give it the L host. And usually in the L host, we give it the IP of our current computer. But as I said, the IP of the current computer is private. It's only visible within this network. And I want to receive this connection from another computer that is connected to another network. So I want to receive it over the internet. Therefore, we're actually going to be using this address right here. This is the address of our SSH server that is configured to forward ports to us. And we're going to give it the L port and we're going to set that to 80 because currently we set the tunnel to forward ports from 80 to 80. That's why we're using 80 here. And finally, we're going to give it the file type, which is the executable and the output file. And we're going to just call it evil.exe. So very, very simple. We're using MSF Venom to generate a backdoor with a Metasploit payload. We're giving it the payload type and we're using HTTP here because that's a limitation of this service of localhost.run. It only allows us to forward HTTP traffic. We're giving it the L host to the address of our SSH server on the internet. Again, we took that from here. We're setting the port to port 80 and file type is an executable and the file name is going to be called evil.exe and that's going to be stored in my current working directory. I actually want to store this in my web root so I can actually download it using the web server that we started in here. Therefore, I'm just going to type var www.html because that is the default path of the web root. So if we hit enter, this will generate the backdoor for us. And if we go to our file manager in var www.html, you'll see we have the new evil.exe file, which is the backdoor that we just generated. So now let's go to the target computer and let's download it. Again, this is a computer connected to a different network and we're gonna be able to download it by simply typing evil.exe through the web server that is running right now. And as you can see, it's allowing us to download the file. And if we look at our file manager, we'll see the file we have it right here. Now, before I run it, I will actually have to listen for incoming connections, as you know. And right now, Apache is actually running on port 80. So I need to first of all stop Apache, which is my web server, by typing service Apache to stop. And then we're gonna listen for incoming connections using Metasploit's multi-handler. The reason why we're doing this because this service right here, localhost.run, only allows us to forward ports on port 80 and only allows us to set up one tunnel. So it's a limitation of the service and that's why I start my web server, I downloaded the file and now I'm starting my backdoor. You could actually pay for the service and it'll allow you to run multiple tunnels or you could just have your own SSH server. It really depends on you. The goal of this video is just to teach you how to forward ports using SSH. So uh, we stopped our Apache. We're gonna clear the screen and we're gonna start MSF console so that we can listen for incoming connections using the multi-handler. So to do that, we're gonna use exploit multi-handler. We're gonna set the payload to the payload that we picked, which is Windows Meterpreter Reverse HTTP. We're gonna set the L port to the port that we picked, which is 80. And we're gonna set the L host to the same L host that we set up in the backdoor, which is this one, which is the IP of our SSH server. And finally, we're usually done at this stage, again, because we're receiving connections within the network or we're receiving the connections directly to our computer if it's on the cloud. In this case, we're using SSH for port forwarding. Therefore, there is one more option that we need to set, which is the reverse listener bind address. So this basically tells Metasploit that I'm actually listening for incoming connections on a computer that is not 
the one that we set in the L host because you know the one in the L host is my SSH server and right now I'm listening for incoming connections the handler is running on my local host on this computer and that's why we're gonna set this option to the local host we're gonna hit enter and now you can do just show options for you to have a look on all the options that we set so far and now that we're done we're gonna do exploit this will simply listen and wait for incoming connections. So let's go to the target computer. Again, a computer that is connected to a completely dif different network and it can actually be in different countries, doesn't really matter. We're gonna run it, we're gonna accept this, we're gonna say run anyway, and let's go back to the hacker computer. And as you can see, we are receiving a connection from the target computer and now we have a interpreter session. We can do this info to get more information. We can do there to list files and so on. We basically have full access to this target computer. And this was just another example on how to forward ports using this particular service, localhost.run. Like I said, there's a number of limitations to the free service. The main one is allowing you to only have one tunnel and one port. But like I said, you can bypass that by signing up to the paid one or by having your own SSH server. But the main thing is it's actually very, very easy to use this to expose a service to the internet. So from now on, after you generate your SSH key, which is this step right here, once you're done with that, all you have to do is simply run this command and that's it. You're gonna forward ports to port 80 on the SSH server to whatever port that you put in here. It's as simple as that. So in many cases, it'll actually be even faster than going to your router settings and enabling port forwarding on your own router. Sorry if I flew over some of the stuff like generating the backdoor and the concepts and even how networks work. It's hard to cover all that in details in a YouTube video. I do cover this stuff in more details in my courses. So check them out if you wanna learn more or use Google to learn more about anything that I did not cover in details. Now, if you're a programmer or considering to learn programming, then I highly recommend checking out Kite. It's an add-on that you can add to pretty much any IDE or text editor, including Sublime, which is my favorite, and it'll pretty much transform it into an IDE, showing you function signatures, documentation, possible methods, and so on. But the coolest thing about it is it'll study your programming style and use machine learning to auto-complete your code. It's really, really cool. You have to try it to see it for yourself. Just use the links in the description to get it. Kite is sponsoring this video, but I wouldn't recommend it if I didn't like it and didn't use it myself. I hope you found this video useful. Let me know what you think in the comments and don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel to stay updated with the latest in cybersecurity.